This is John Peltonen with 3 Sharp. In this visual how-to, I'll set up a business data catalog association that will enable a user to use a business data list and a business data related list web part to filter data coming from a line of business system. In our case, we'll just be using the AdventureWorks database and we'll have a customer's entity in a business data list that is driving a sales order business data related list web part so that when a user selects a customer, they'll see the sales orders for that customer. And then, just for kicks, we'll kick it up a notch and add line items so that when we select a given order, we'll see the line items for that particular order. So we'll go from customers to orders to line items. So the first stop in our whirlwind tour of business data catalog associations is the metadata file. This is the file, as they say on MTV Cribs, where all the magic happens. Now, this is the identical file that we're starting with, or at least we started with the identical file that we built in the visual how-to called Creating Business Data Catalog Entities. I'm not going to talk a lot about these top level elements, at least the access control lists, LOB system instances, and entities elements, because we already did that. In fact, we had a visual how-to that went in and defined all these things, including the customer entity. So really, I'm taking that and I'm starting there. I'm starting with the identical customer entity to the one that we built in the Creating Business Data Catalog Entities how-to. And then I added two new entities, sales order and line item. If we drill into the sales order entity, we'll see the same sort of top level elements. We'll see our title, uh, sales order number. We'll see an identifier. Again, that's the unique identifier. And in this case, it's sales order ID. And then we'll go into the key portion of this, which is our methods. And we'll see we have two methods, get sales orders. This is kind of the generic method, same as I used in customer to return um, it, both a specific sales order or all the sales orders. So it's what implements our finder and specific finder method instance. And then I also have this other method called get sales orders for customers. And as you can probably assume, this is the thing that we're going to use to start to manage the association between the sales order entity and the customer entity. If I bump down into the properties, we'll see our SQL select statement. So select sales order ID order date, ship date, status, and sales order number from a few different tables where customer type equals a certain thing and customer ID equals our input parameter called customer ID. Remember, we're in the sales order entity, but we're filtering on customer ID here. If I go down into my parameters, we'll see our two, our input parameter, which is that customer ID, and then the output parameter, which just returns the sales order entity. If I expand this a little bit, we'll see exactly what we saw when we were defining our customer parameter before. Um, what we, first, we have our type descriptor in 32, our name. Now, this gets a little different. So we have an identifier name. What we're saying here is this customer ID is associated with the unique identifier, something that uniquely identifies an entity. That unique identifier is called customer ID. But guess what? It's in this other entity. So this identifier entity name attribute tells the business data catalog that this identifier, this input parameter is for the customer entity's identifier. So what we're saying here is if you know the customer, you can get the sales orders for that customer. But there's no method instance. There's no executable method to get, no way to get into this method, this particular method. Well, that's what you think until we go down into the associations element. So that's a new top level element we didn't look at in the prior visual how-to. And if we go down in here, we can see how we're defining, we have two associations. We're just gonna look at the first one here. Um, if I go way down to the end, we'll see the association name. <coughs> the name of this association is customer to sales orders. Before we look at the rest of the attributes, I just want to point out that we have a source entity here called customer and a destination entity called sales order. So if we start at customer, we should be able to get the sales order. That's all we're saying here. Now, going back to the attributes, we have this thing called the association method entity name. That's telling the business data catalog and SharePoint what entity has the method that handles this association. In our case, it's sales order. Now, this can be some third-party entity. 
So it could be something other than customer or sales order. But in our case, it just makes sense since we're returning a sales order to just keep it in that sales order entity. We have an association method name as well. That is what we were just looking at, the get sales orders for customer. Now we also have an association method return parameter, sales order. So what's the return parameter specifically that should be returned during our um, call? And finally, we can optionally specify an association method return type descriptor name. So that's even a lower level thing than the return parameter itself. And that's, um, in our case, it's just a top level type descriptor, sales order data reader. But we could have a type descriptor that's somewhere down within the hierarchy of what's being returned. Usually we'll see that more often in a web service than a database thing where we can really filter what our results are coming straight out of the database. And finally, again, we have our name, customer to sales orders. OK, and that's what we need for an association. Now, we also have this other entity. And as I mentioned in the introduction, we want to go from customer to view a sales order. And then we want to select a given sales order for a customer to view the specific line items for that sales order. Now, the line item is kind of a special case here. We don't want this line item to show up in search. We don't want the line item to show up in a normal BDC list. And we don't need entity instances within that line item to have the concept of a business data catalog action. We don't need users to act on specific line items within a sales order. Now, because of that, we don't need to instantiate any method instances. So we have one method. Instead of having that generic get line items method, we just have one called get line items for sales orders. If we look down in the properties, we'll see the same sort of select statement we saw up above. We're returning a bunch of stuff, sales order detail, name, product number, carrier tracking number, order quantity, et cetera, where sales order ID equals sales order ID. That's it. Look down into our input parameters. And we'll see our sales order ID is an input parameter. And again, we're going to see this identifier entity name of sales order and then the identifier name itself sales order ID. So that identifier doesn't sit in that line items entity. It doesn't sit in this entity. It sits in this entity. And again, that means that if we start up at the top at that sales order, if we know the identifier, so if we know that sales order ID identifier, we can get the line items for that sales order. Again, if I go down to associations, we'll see exactly the same kind of association, only this time we're starting at sales order and we're going to line item. All the other stuff similar. So association method, method entity name, this time it's line item. The association method name is the only method in that entity. Get line items for sales order. Return, return parameter, line items, and so on. So from customer, we should be able to go to sales orders and then from sales orders to line item. So I've just tabbed over to the Shared Services Administration site of uh, SharePoint. And you can see that I have a few Business Data Catalog applications imported. We'll go to the CRM application. Now I imported this metadata file just like I did in that Creating Business Data Catalog Entities how-to. This time, however, instead of just seeing customer, we'll also see the two new entities, line item and sales order. Everything looks good here, so I'm going to switch over to my SharePoint site itself. Now, I'm already in edit mode here, and I've already added a BDC list or a business data list web part called customer list, and then two business data related list web parts that have yet to be configured. I'm going to click open the tool pane to configure the first one, and then I'm going to scroll over and now choose the business data type. In our case, the first one will be sales order, and in one second, we'll be given a list of relationships to choose from. In this case, we have one customer to sales order, and this is the association. So this is the name of the association in our metadata file. I'll click OK. And in just a minute, we'll be asked by the web part itself to associate it with a web part that provides the customer entity. So to do that, I'm going to click Edit, Connections, Get Related Item from Customer List. And now, when I scroll down and select a customer within our list, we should see that particular customer's sales orders show up in our sales order list. If I select 
a different customer will see a different sales order ID or collection of sales order ID show up. Finally, I'm going to do exactly the same thing for our line items. So we can go from customer to sales order to line item. So again, I'm going to go back to my tool pane, choose the line item entity, wait for the refresh so I can choose the relationship. You see it's already selected for me. It's the only one, sales order to line items. I'll click OK here. And then I again need to do this web part connection. So I'll scroll back, click edit, connections, get related item from, and this time we want sales order list. And again, our page is getting kind of messy here. I think you can understand that it takes a little bit of effort to clean this up and make it look pretty. But now when I select my sales order, we'll see the line items show up in our next web part.